Welcome back to the Richie Rich Chemist. Another Saturday with yet another person to discuss career opportunities in science. And today we have with us Dr. Brian Jeevan Fernandez, postdoctoral researcher in the Department of Physics at India's premier most institute, the Indian Institute of Science. Thank you, Brian. Really glad that you could make it here today. Can you talk us through your academic journey so far? I did my PhD from National Institute of Technology, Karnataka, Suratkal. After that, I worked as a research associate at IAC only, Indian Institute of Science, for a ISRO project. When I was doing my PhD at NITK, I collaborated with one of the professors here at IAC. When I submitted my thesis, he wrote me a mail. See, there is a project. You come and join me. It was a small project. ISRO outsources a lot of work. Highly qualified researchers work at different uh, levels. Our work was increasing the efficiency of the transmittance of the infrared transmitting lens. Uh, that is how we you know the ISRO project was uh, all about. After that, I went in uh, as an assistant professor at uh, Presidency University for an year. Meanwhile, I again get a postdoctoral fellowship from University Grant Commission. So I came, I come back to IAAC and and again, you know, I start my postdoctoral journey. It's been three years in IAAC. I see that you are currently a Dr. D.S. Kotari Fellow. Can you tell us what does that mean and what are the advantages of getting this kind of a fellowship? Dr. D.S. Kotari Postdoctoral Fellowship uh, is a very prestigious fellowship. Unluckily, you know, government has stopped that fellowship and they have merged with the university. Kotari Postdoctoral Fellowship was running in the country for a long time. There is no interview uh, for this particular fellowship. You will be screened with the four or uh, five different areas one is your profile the other one is your pro uh, professor's profile the one who is going to host you the institution also does matter where you are uh, applying from thirdly what is the number of uh, publications and all you had and then the brief summary of your uh, phd thesis if you have a phd degree only then you can apply it, it is there for uh, sciences and it is there for even engineering sciences also can you tell us what your current research work is all about in the past i did i worked on amorphous semiconductors where i was working on memory types switching materials, semiconducting glasses, metallic glasses. Right now, you know, I have shifted completely to internal field nuclear magnetic resonances of, you know, Euchler alloys. Euchler alloys are magnetic materials. Finding the default magnetism, some of the ferromagnetic materials will have its magnetism. We are applying a RF signal and, you know, we will excite the magnetic field and then we find the spectroscopy. Our basic idea is to find the physics of it. This particular area of research, you know, happening very rare in India. Everybody is generally, you know, keen on knowing uh, what the regular day in the life of a postdoctoral researcher at IISC is like? Though it is a research scholar, though it is a postdoctoral and though it is a faculty, everyone works at the same enthusiasm. No one will ask, you know, when you are coming, when you are going, which day you are taking a leave. People are working very sincerely, passionately. Sometimes, you know, you have to work in the night. You, you have assigned some slots for that. So then, you know, you may not come in the morning. Your words and... definitely took me back to my time at IISC. It's a different world altogether, right? Even at one o'clock in the night, if you walk around on the campus, you will see people in the lab, which is right. very inspiring. And you get food also 24 into 7. Oh, yes. <laughs> you enjoy working at IAC because you have all the facilities there. As a student, we get the access to run the equipment like uh, scanning electron microscope, X-ray diffractometer, and then Raman uh, characterizations. Any characterizations, you name it, whatever the facilities are there, you have to get a training and you have to write an exam and then you have to get a license. Once you are properly trained, you know, they will allow you to use your own. I'm keen to know what your motivation was for you to take up research. I don't think, you know, there was a motivation and all that. Every step, see, Sequentially, I went on doing at my own thinking. I was thinking everyone are becoming engineering and doctors, you know, what about uh, other particular job? I need to excel in that. I took up physics, electronics, mathematics that time. Took up my master's in electronics, thinking that, you know, if I want to go to industry also I can go and if I want to go for academics also I can go. 2008 was a recession time. That time, you know, I went into academics. One of my colleague was doing a PhD at uh, NIT. Looking at him, I got motivated. So then I wrote an exam. There were uh, four vacancies. My rank was three and I got in. What do you think are the major challenges for someone in a career in research? Research itself is, you know, a slow and steady process. So you have to wait for a lot of results to come in. And then networking and active networking and collaboration is also very difficult. And juggling of activities and maintaining a time balance between work-life balance, you know, it is very difficult. Most research, then, you know, one has to find is her own bread and butter. But still, passionate research will have its place. What options does one have after completing a post 
postdoctoral research in the field that you are working on? Finding opportunities is not a difficult task. Try to finish off your uh, postdoctoral journey in one or two and try to find a job. So one postdoctoral fellowship in India, then I will uh, look into another postdoctoral fellowship in abroad. How long you know you can be in the treadmill of postdoctoral fellowship? Suppose say you are getting uh, faculty positions in one of the premier institutions, it is fine. Otherwise, there are n number of jobs available. So I was collaborated with Thermoelectric Group also, and I was also working on, with the people who are working on sensors, so oxide glasses. So I I was working four to five topics altogether. So while doing so, I will have uh, hands-on skills on many different uh, places. There are many industries: you know, ASML, lamp research, applied materials. People who are working in glasses, you know, Saint Gobain and all that. Getting into those particular stream, you know, you need to have reference. Princess, you need to have contacts. That is another part. The research population is also becoming more and more. But be in the process, you will get it. Students, especially in their younger classes, find physics extremely difficult. What do you think is the best strategy to study physics at that age? Walter Levin made a very good statement. Teachers who made physics boring are criminals. Physics is not at all a tough subject. The method of teaching should change. You know, I put that blame on teachers, not on students. Physics, you need to understand. You need to practice. Study by learning. There is a fame and technique of learning. The best way of learning. learning is teaching ourselves when i make some concepts so well versed so that i can teach someone else then you know i am understanding the subject you know that is how you know i was learning you struck the nail on the head with that because when you teach somebody there's so much that you learn if you had to go back in time and advise your younger self what would the top 3 on that advice list be i was you know fortunate enough not to have phone so not on that particular level but i don't regret my younger self one thing i would uh, always feel that you know i would have worked more to be better as a student i have enjoyed my life success is always sweet but the secret of success is sweat i should have sweat more but i would have advised my myself but I, i would have upskilled myself computer skills learning that learning the shortcuts now how to use excel properly how to use powerpoint properly don't go for the artificial intelligent tools go and use uh, the c- conventional mode learn them properly then you use the shortcut method that is fine one fine arts you need to have so that will increase your iq level have a sound space sleep for 8 hours quality time on study 8 hours 8 hours sleep rest of the 8 hours is us. like you know do whatever you want to do investing on health is important this channel is a tribute to my teacher dr richard gonsalves and he was your teacher as well so what is it that inspired you the most about richard sir the man himself is a inspiration I I was very fortunate enough to learn chemistry from him. I love him. He's a very pure gentleman, a humble person. I hope the past 10 minutes have enlightened you on a new path that one can take through science. There are many more to come and we will discuss them in our coming episodes. So until then, stay hungry, stay informed.